Welcome, this is Information Service Engineering lecture number seven, Knowledge Graphs part two. In this section of the lecture, we are going to talk about RDFS, which is the RDF schema language, which is used to create models for RDF, the resource description framework. Before we go deeper into that, let's first have a look at the following RDF statements here given as a graph. You have here the greenhouse effect and you have here greenhouse gas. And greenhouse gas, as it states, is a contributing factor of the greenhouse effect, which was discovered by Joseph Fourier. But why do we know that this really means exactly what we are telling you? Most likely because we have used in the URIs self-speaking names. And of course, we have a knowledge about language and therefore know what these things mean. So where does the intended meaning then really come from? Does the computer really sees the same that we see here? Probably not. So again, let's have a look at these statements. We have the greenhouse gas, which seems to be a contributing factor of the greenhouse effect. But what are these URIs? So greenhouse effect is something which can uniquely be identified via that given URI as well as greenhouse gas, again, is something which can be uniquely identified via exactly that URI. However, I could use complete different names. So imagine I would here, instead of greenhouse effect, take Q142, and instead of greenhouse gas, I would take Q141, and for the property, I would use Q144. So then you would see there is a relation between Q141 and Q142, which is a specific relation since it's named it's Q144, but you would have no idea what it really means. So to put more information in it, we need more semantic expressivity. A starting point for that, here we are now on the modeling layer, is RDF schema, the most basic modeling language. And we will see that this comes in quite handy if you want to create classes, if you want to create properties. Further meaning later on will be added then by using other vocabularies and languages like, for example, OWL, the web ontology language, or SCOS. But now let's focus on RDF schema. RDF schema is officially called RDF vocabulary description language, and it allows you, for example, the definition of classes as well as a class instantiation. So. The vocabulary we need for that is, of course, we have to identify what is a class. And there we have RDFS class. So this is a class. And if we want to instantiate that class, we have RDF type as an instantiation. If you now want to say something is a class, then we can say greenhouse gas, if you want to define that, is of RDF type RDFS class, which means this is a class. So it's an instance of the superclass of all the classes, which is RDFS class. So greenhouse gas is a class. And now a specific greenhouse gas, which is then an instance of exactly that kind of class I would denote as carbon dioxide, is of type, RDF type, greenhouse gas. So then I would know, okay, carbon dioxide is an element of exactly that kind of class. And you could write it here in exactly the same way here in set notation. Please also note that down here on the right side, we also have all of the necessary required prefix definitions to better understand or to fully understand what we are writing here in RDF Turtle. So these are relative URIs. And of course, if I don't have anything, I use some kind of a base URI that you see here. And um, I can also use here RDF and RDFS as abbreviations for the two namespaces that you see down here in the lower right corner. Okay, what else can I do? I can define properties. So definition of properties works via RDF properties. So watch out, this is not RDFS property. Property belongs to the RDF namespace, so therefore it's RDF property. And if I want to define a property, I usually can restrict what can be connected with what by that property. So I restrict domain and range definitions of this property via two new keywords. I have RDFS domain and RDFS range that I can use here also as properties. So let's have a look at the statement we have here. We say that person 
is a class, so person is of RDF type, RDF is class. And we say discoverer is a property, so discoverer is of RDF type, RDF property. Now we say what does discoverer connect with what type of class? So we say the domain, so anything can be discovered then by someone, which means the domain must be a thing. And the guy who discovered then something must be a person. So therefore the domain of discoverer is, can be anything. So discoverer has RDFS domain thing. So thing we say can be anything. And discoverer has the range. So who is the discoverer? A person. So this is then a person. With that, I have restricted domain and range from that property that I can only connect here a thing on the one hand side and person on the other hand side. Why I do need to restrict this, you will see later on, because this has logical constraints on the other hand. So what I do here is nothing else but defining a relation between things and person. And this discoverer is now a relation that connects things to person in exactly the way you see here. Okay, what else can we say about RDF schema? It's not very much vocabulary. So the next thing what we can see, everything in RDF is a resource. So there is something which is called RDF as resource, which is somehow the upper class of everything, which means then here RDF as class is a resource, RDF property is a resource, RDF as literal. This is also something which you can define literals here based on RDF as literal. Um, that's a resource. You can define an XML literal. This is then, of course, a literal with a XML schema data type. And you can define a data type. All of this, what is in the RDFS vocabulary, is a resource. Basically, we only need to define what is a class, what is a property, and um, what are domain range restrictions for properties, as we have seen there. One more thing, I can also relate classes with each other with a in a hierarchical relationship. So I can define subclasses and superclasses. And for that, I have one specific vocabulary word, one property, which is RDFS subclass of. I can say here, for example, that greenhouse gas is a subclass of an air pollutant, which means all greenhouse gases are air pollutants. However, there are some air pollutants which are not greenhouse gases. You see this again here in set or as a, as a Venn diagram here, so it would look like that. And of course, this means greenhouse gas is a subclass of air pollutant or a subset of air pollutant, as you see in the, the set-based notation here. I can, for that, simply write a quick RDF statement, which gives me exactly the same information about this hierarchical relationship between the two classes. I cannot only relate classes with each other, I can also relate properties with each other. And there are also sub properties and super properties, which means I can define that one property is more generic than the other or the other way around. One property is more specific than the other by, for example, defining a sublimation temperature, which of course is kind of a temperature. But if this is a property, so if I connect a thing with a specific value, and I say then sublimation temperature is a rather special case of temperature. So therefore it's a sub property of temperature. So I can do hierarchical, um, let's say um, taxonomies here in the way that I relate classes with each other or properties with each other. And this is already rather powerful. What else is there in RDF schema? I have a few more properties. So there is RDFS see also this is only a kind of relation that connects a resource to another resource that more or less will explain it but it's rather you know gen general so this is a rather general attribute you have here more specific is then rdfs is defined by this is a sub property of rdfs see also that defines the relation of a resource to its definition which is quite quite clear if you want to comment something, so you have the possibility to use RDFS comment, then you comment some text describing probably this resource or giving a bit more of a comment to that resource. It's not a definition, then you could use is defined by. However, you can 
relate more textual information always to a resource by giving it a name and here you have the the property it's called rdfs label and this is a readable name of a resource contrary to an id with an id would be machine readable but this is a readable name so rdfs label then you really give, gives the name in some language which is human readable okay now let's put all of that together and we have a longer example with rdf and rdfs so first of all as you see here we have a lot of prefix definitions definitely we have to define the prefixes for rdfs and rdf and since we here are also talking about things we have already some owl in it don't worry about that simply see that as another prefix of something we are using here and then we define the shortest prefix of all which is simply a colon so nothing followed by a colon and this is our base prefix here so since we want to keep things short we could have also made a base definition but in this case i show you how to avoid the base definition and simply make then a prefix rather short here with a simple colon you avoid then the angle brackets in your definitions in the in the turtle it looks a bit nicer okay now let's look at the real rdf type which is not the prefix part first of all we have the class definitions we define the greenhouse gas as being a class and we say greenhouse gas is a subclass of air pollutant and then we define person as being a class and then we want to have a bit more specific persons so for example we define scientists which we define as a subclass of person and we define then physicist and chemist which are both subclasses of scientists you see here i define a hierarchy of classes here next thing i define a property and here i define as you already know the discoverer and i say yeah now um, this is of course a property and i want to connect with this discoverer property something and this i take from the owl vocabulary there already exists the a thing which is thing this is uh, as i told you uh, the most general class everything is a thing and then uh, i define the range restriction to person so now comes the instance definitions i define carbon dioxide to be a greenhouse gas and it has been discovered by jan baptist van helmont and as well it has been discovered by joseph black and for jan baptist van helmont i say this is a physicist and for joseph black i say this is a chemist while Joseph Black also has a label here, so this is Joseph Black given in English, and I can write a comment to Joseph Black and I give Joseph Black the comment, he co-discovered carbon dioxide, CO2. You see here, this is our first RDF, RDFS example, and it's not so difficult to read that stuff. Okay, I hope now you know everything what you have to know about RDF and RDFS. In the next section of the lecture, I will show you what use it is to really then apply RDF and RDFS because you can do logical inference on it. There is a fixed semantics, a formal semantics given with it that is based on logic, which means I can do logical inference with this kind of language. And you will see how helpful this is.